So, hi everyone, sorry for the delay, my fault. And uh, didn't press it. So, uh, let's start. So, uh, I'm Sharon Grach. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer. <laughs> Too late. Okay, so I'm Sharon Grach. I'm a senior software engineer at uh, Ovir team uh, Red Hat. And I'm going to talk today about high performance virtual machines, which is a feature recently added to Ovirt. It actually was added to Ovirt 4.2 and enhanced in Ovirt 4.3, which is the coming next version of Ovirt. Now, let's start by understanding what is a high performance VM. So we are talking about a VM that we want it to run it with highest possible performance, as close to bare metal as possible. But what we are not supporting uh, with this high performance VM is that we are not supporting real time. Real time, and I, there are few people that confuse between high performance and real time, but it's two different things. When we're talking about real time, you're talking about predicting a, a set of operations that should be done in a given amount of time. And when we are talking about high performance, we are talking about enlarging as much as we can the number of operations that can be proceeded in a given amount of time. And it's two different things. So real time doesn't necessarily mean that you are running with high performance uh, mode. So we are, just to make it clear, we are supporting high performance and we are still doesn't support real time VMs. Now, why we added this uh, feature for supporting high performance VM? So, main reason was that there were applications that needed a higher performance than others, and for supporting that, for letting them run on a VM and not on the bare metal machine, we wanted to uh, create an easy way uh, to, uh, of a high performance VM. Because the users could, even before this feature, users could have a set high performance VM. They just needed to go over all the VM properties, why by one, understand what they should do, which properties to change and how, and then they will have a high performance VM. But it's not a straightforward mission to do. So we now have a very easy uh, uh, use case in, for the user to do that, much more easier. In addition to that, when they tried to do that uh, before this feature, live migration was not supported. And live migration, as we know, is a very crucial uh, ability and feature for uh, running VMs. So now it is supported, and it's something that we worked on. And the last uh, thing that we worked on for this feature is there were few uh, functionalities that were missing for uh, really supporting uh, running a VM with the highest performance that is possible. And now we implemented those features. The list is on the slide, there's a lot of things. For example, huge page, support for huge pages, support for uh, headless VMs, disable of USB and other devices, uh, enable multi queues per virtual interfaces, etc. Now, now uh, when you create an over VM, uh, you must set a field called the VM type or the optimized for field. And that means that you you, you are setting the type of the VM that you want to run your, your applications on. There are two options. There were two options. Desktop and server, if you are planning to run the VM as a desktop machine, then you will set it as desktop. And if you are planning to run it as a server, then server. So we used that field and added a third value, which is called high performance. And now when you want to run an application that requires a higher performance, you set this field to be high performance. And that's all, the VM is now high performance VM. As you can see, this is the Ovirt UI dialog for creating or editing a VM. And there is one, now a third value called high performance, you set it, and that's all, the VM is high performance, very easy. It, it is easy, but not, there are still things that I need to talk about. It's not that easy, there are still few things to consider. Because by choosing this new high performance VM, Two things happen. One, the automatic settings, meaning that the VM is pre-configured with a set of uh, uh, configuration settings for, that improve the performance. But there are still few, not a lot, but few settings that we cannot automatically set in advance. 
because it depends on a lot of things. For example, the host that the VM is going to run on, and things that is a bit problematic to calculate in advance. And for that reason, we, there is another layer, which is manual settings. And for that, we added a smart dialog uh, that uh, uh, helped the user uh, set those manual settings. He check which settings are uh, missing. He advised the user how to do that, but the user still need to manually set those settings. We will detail them later on. That's the, the, that was the two phases for creating the new uh, IO performance VM type. And now, two things that are important to mention is that all those settings, the manual and the um, automatic, are non-mandatory. User can choose if you want to apply all, some, or none of them. And of course, whatever you can do for a new VM, you can do for an existing VM. You can take a server VM and switch it to high performance. It's also supported. Now you can ask me a question that uh, is very logical, <coughs> and it, it is that if, it's so easy to create high performance VM, and I, I can gain a VM with the highest possible performance, so why not uh, declaring all VMs as high performance? So the answer is that as all other things, good things in life, there is a price. And the price in this case is the flexibility that you need to pay. So there is a balance between flexibility and performance. The more performance you gain for the VM, the less flexibility you will have, and I will explain that later. But for example, just you will have a clue now, for example, if you create a high-performance VM, then you cannot have the default mode, is that you cannot have USB, you cannot have graphic consoles, uh, migration is a bit more limited, uh, the hosts that you can run on are limited, et cetera, et cetera. So there are few limited things, and the flexibility is hurt because of that. Now let's drill, drill down to the actual settings that, are all, that I talked about, and we'll start by the automatic settings. <coughs> so first of all, on the console area, automatically for you, we enable the headless mode, meaning that there is no graphic console. But on the other end, we also enable the serial console, so we'll, there will be some kind of a console to manage the VM. In the devices area, we disable this list of devices. We disable automatically the QXL, the SPICE, the USB, the sound card, the smart card, memory balloon, watchdog, the tablet. All of those are disabled. Again, you can, of course, enable it if you want. So when you disable it, of course, the, the performance will be increased because there is no, no need to manage those devices. But again, on the other hand, the functionality of those devices is missing. You won't have USB. Next thing is networking. We enable multi-queues per virtual machines. Uh, that means that per each, per, sorry, per uh, virtual interface, that means that per each virtual uh, interface, uh, networking interface, you will have more than one queue. And of course, the uh, networking request will be handled in parallel, so the performance will be increased. On the other hand, you need to remember that per each one of these queues, you will need a thread to handle that queue. That, and that means that there will be less uh, threads used for processing, for CPU. So you keep, need to keep in mind that if you will have a VM that uh, uh, has a lot of networking operations, then it's good to, to leave it as is. But if you will have a VM that you will know that the applications running on it will need to use more processing, uh, the, the load will be on processing side and less networking activity, then maybe you should disable it. And again, we'll see that along the way, the, the balance between the flexibility to what you really want to use for your performance uh, increasing. We also have, I, I, will, I will try to make it a bit uh, quicker, we have the entropy, uh, we'll enable the random number generator, the same as done for the host, we will do for the VM, so of course the performance will be increased. And, and the CPU will enable the cache layer three. We have layer one, layer two, we added another cache layer, so of course performance will be increased. Continuing the automatic settings regarding the storage I.O., we'll do, first of all, the default disk interface is SCSI because we tested and see that in most cases the performance is increased. Storage allocation, storage allocation will be pre-allocated instead of a thin allocation because, of course, in that way, uh, write and read operations are quicker. And the VM mode will be set to non-stateless. Uh, because that way we doesn't need to keep the state and the performance is decreased because the deltas should not be handled. And another thing, we enable the IO thread. 
meaning that there will be a dedicated thread on the VM uh, for serving I.O. operations. The default value is one, but because we tested and see that that's the usual uh, value that is okay for most cases, but again, we can change it. And regarding the host spinning area, we do think, two things automatically. We enable the pass-through of CPU. That means that the CPU model and CPU flags that the VM is using is exactly the same as the host that the VM is running on. Of course, the performance will be increased. And we enable a, and a pin the I.O. and emulator thread automatically. And the last thing that is done automatically is that we enable love migration. This is nothing, has nothing to do with performance increasing, but it's a feature that we really wanted to have, and now we have it. And of course, for all of those, as I mentioned before, you can apply all of them, none of them, all depends on what you really want to achieve. Now, I want to talk a bit about migration because we had a lot of problems with that. So you need to keep in mind that if you try to migrate high performance VM, uh, the uh, performance may be decreased because you try to take a VM running on one host with all the pinning configuration and all the, th the things that are set into this host and try to run it on a second host, another host. Maybe the performance will be decreased because the pinning is changed and the host, host settings is different. So that should be kept in mind. And because of that, we decided that the different mode for migration for those high performance VMs will not be automatic migration but rather a manual migration. So the only, the default behavior is that once you have a performance VM, you need, you can migrate it only manually by going to the VM and try to migrate it now or by changing the host that the VM runs on to maintenance mode. That, nevertheless, we still support automatic migration. I just say automatic migration means that the VM is automatically migrated when the engine decided that it's the right time to do that because of, a, for example, a load balancer decisions or availability mechanism because the host is not responding and things like that. So we do support it, but because you should remember that the performance may be decreased and the user doesn't have control on that, so it should be considered with caution. I mean, maybe it's not worth setting that, it depends <coughs> on the user. Another thing that we handled is selecting the destination host for the migration. Uh, we decided that source and destination host should not be identical. If they're identical, the performance won't, won't be damaged, but it's not a requirement. What should be done is that source and destination host should be compatible. Compatible in everything, in the number of CPUs, CPU pinning capacity, memory, huge pages, of course, because otherwise the VM won't run. And because of that, uh, the limitation that we are currently have is that the VM can migrate it not to all the hosts in the cluster, the obvious cluster, but only to a subset, the ones that are compatible to that VM. So this is a limitation. And another thing is that uh, between, among all those compatible hosts, the, uh, the, the performance uh, uh, results can be different because it depends on the status of the host, um, um, what is the load of the host, how many pinned other VMs are running on the host, currently running on the host, etc. So the recommendation is that uh, the user will use manual migration, but he will let the engine automatically decide about the destination host. We have that feature. It's actually the, the default mode. The user can choose to which host you want to migrate the VM, but it's less recommended because maybe you will choose a, a, a host with a, that will result in a, a, a performance results that are less good for us. Now let's talk about manual settings. So there are four manual settings that the user is recommended to set. I will start with the first one, set the CPU pinning. That means that each one of the virtual CPUs in the VM will be pinned to physical uh, CPU on the host. If, of course, that the performance will be increased. Another thing is setting virtual NUMA nodes for the VM and pinning to the physical NUMA nodes on the host. NUMA node means that we, you take the CPUs and located in, in them uh, seem, uh, close to the chunk of memory that the CPUs are using. Of course, that in that setting, the performance increased. And, but we say more than that. Not just declare a NUMA node, virtual NUMA nodes on the VM, physical NUMA nodes on the host, but pin the virtual NUMA nodes to the physical NUMA nodes on the host. In that way, we even increase the performance. Another thing that we uh, recommend users to do is set the huge pages, memory backing with huge pages. 
As we all know, the memory is divided to pages, uh, and for managing those pages, there is the TLB table, that, and of course, it requires a lot of, uh, decrease the performance to manage it. If you declare huge pages, meaning that the uh, page size is larger, that means that there are less pages to manage and the performance is increased. So that's what we recommend the user to do. And the last bullet that we ask the user to manually set is disable KSM, kernel same page merging. This, the kernel uh, have the ability to uh, unify or uh, say one copy of identical pages in memory of uh, all, all the VMs in the system. This is, of course, they have, have advantages, but from performance aspect, it's less preferred, and we disable it. And of course, the user can uh, apply all, some, or none. Now, about huge pages, a few things that are uh, important to remember is that, first of all, uh, we set the huge page size, they are recommended sizes as written in the slide, and we also recommend to set the uh, virtual machine huge pages to be the same size as the OS that the VM is going to run on and if there are few sizes, to the largest size. And of course, make sure that there are enough free huge pages for the VM to use, otherwise it won't work. Another thing that we automatically set is that the huge pages are pre-allocated when the VM starts to run, so there are no dynamic allocation because the performance, again, will be decreased. Other limitations regarding huge pages is that when you set the, the, the high-performance virtual machine memory size, you need to take to calculate how many free huge pages the host has in order so that it will be enough for the memory and for the virtual NUMA node sizes because virtual NUMA node size should be a multiple of huge pages selected size. And two other limitations regarding huge pages is that there are no memory outplug, the unplug and unplug, and memory resource is limited for a host. That means that if I have a host running a, a high-performance virtual machine that uses all the huge pages that the host has, there are no free huge pages, so all other high-performance machines running on the host will not have huge pages because the resource is shared among all the VMs. Now, I want to talk a bit about pinning issues. So we talked before about automatic IO and emulator thread pinning. I want to explain the algorithm behind that. The algorithm says that the first two physical CPUs used by one of the physical NUMA node hosts will be pinned to the IO and emulator threads in the VM. So if all virtual CPUs fit into one of the host NUMA nodes, then it's easy. The first two ones will be pinned to, to usually it is zero and one, to the uh, ION emulator thread. But if the VM spans more than one NUMA node, then we'll choose the NUMA node that is most pinned. We'll take the first two physical CPUs there and pin them to the ION emulator thread. That's the, the algorithm that we do. Now let's take a, a, user, a use case as an example because it's much more clear that, that way. So we have a host with two NUMA nodes, physical NUMA nodes. Each one is set with the memory size and the physical CPUs. And then we declare a performance virtual machine, which has, and we set two virtual NUMA nodes, node zero and node one. For each one of them, we set this, the memory and the CPUs. And in addition to that, we also enable the IO and emulator thread, as we said before. Now we want to start the pinning. So as you can see now, it's most uh, preferable to do the virtual NUMA node spinning such that it will be compatible. So as you can see now, the node zero, the virtual NUMA node zero is most recommended to be pinned to virtual node zero of the, to physical NUMA node zero of the host and the same for uh, node one. After we finish that, we now need to set the CPU pinning. So there are few options how to set it, but most recommended is to do it that way. And after we do it, as you can see, the uh, zero to zero to two, one to three, two to four, etc. This is most recommended because if you do a cross CPU pinning uh, behind between the virtual numbers, the performance will be decreased. And another thing to remember is that CPUs, physical CPU zero and one, should be left empty and not pinned to the virtual CPU so that IO and emulator thread will be pinned to them. So that's, that's the way we recommend to do. Oh, sorry. And a quick future improvement. We said that there are, uh, automatic, that there are no automatic settings, so the future improvements will be to set virtual CPU, uh, normal pinning, CPU pinning, and virtual huge pages automatically. 
to enable affinity rules management to manage those uh, VM, high performance VMs and hosts, and to, of course to continue tuning the high performance VM solution according to future benchmarks. That's all. <laughs> Thank you.